Our guys have worked hard the last couple of days. We knew they would. I think they see where the mistakes were made on film. I think uh, we saw where our opportunities uh, were, how we didn't take advantage of them, the mistakes that we made. We made some uh, discipline mistakes in the game. And as far as we made some communication mistakes as far as what was switchable and what's not. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, we were right there in that second half if we do those things right. And that's what they have to understand. We can't put ourselves in that situation. And, and it doesn't matter if you're home or on the road, you've got to have incredible discipline defensively. You've got to have great ball movement offensively. You've got to uh, stay committed to the game plan. You can't let the crowd, you can't let anything become the distraction. And that's part of still our learning process. And I know it is for others as well, but, but uh, our guys usually do a very good job of absorbing it. And, and I'm glad that we have a game, and, and I'm glad that we're going to have a tough game, because I really believe that it is. I, I think when you get to this time of year, uh, everything matters, every day matters, obviously. And if you've done your work throughout the year, you just kind of continue on from where you've been, and that's what this type of game is. It's a game where uh, they've got a couple of, of high, high major players. They've got a guy that is, without a question, an NBA prospect, and, and Dominique Sutton and a guy that has had success, like we told our guys, a couple of their players, like Sutton and, and Willis, I mean, they're high major guys, and based on the way that they started, and for one reason or another, they, they end up going back to, to North Carolina Central to play, but they're high major guys. So we think that they're well coached. We have played them in the past. An example that I gave our guys is one of them scored 15 points in the game last year. He's probably playing about six, eight minutes a game now. So they are a, a very formidable opponent. They're dangerous. And uh, I'm glad that we get a chance to turn right back around and play. And, and uh, that's, that's the basis of, of, of where you want your team and your program to be. It doesn't matter who you're playing. It doesn't matter when you're playing. You just want to be better than you were the last time out. And then that's our focus in this game. So go ahead. Did you get a sense at all that after watching the, the film on the Iowa game that your guys – Exhaled at all after getting the twentieth. Oh, I think that's an easy. I think that's an easy way to look at it. But we never saw any of that in practice. We never saw any of that in the preparation. We never saw any of that in the walkthrough. No, no. I, I think those signs. Now, I thought a couple of guys needed to. to uh, I thought a couple of guys needed to increase their energy. But but it's a long season, so sometimes you look at it that way. But no, I did not. I, I don't think any of us picked it up like that. I mean, because our antenna is always up for that, and I think you get pretty good at sniffing that out. So no, we just and we got off to a, we got off to a decent start in the game. We just we turned the ball over, and uh, then we were back on our heels. But really, even when the game got cut to ten, I know I've said this so many times, but we felt like I still felt like we were going to win. But we made some mistakes. I mean, we made a couple of mistakes on Gatons. We're supposed to switch. We have our hands down. We misplay the screens. That's nine points right there. You can't do that when when momentum is up for grabs. We had started to grab momentum back in the game, and then Gatons hit some threes, and momentum was gone, and and uh, that was disappointing. Now the the, the the biggest problems in that game is we didn't take care of the backboards, and we and they had too many points off turnovers, and then we didn't win the 50-50 game. And and uh, this team has won the 50-50 game a lot this year, and we usually have the points to show for it. And when you don't win it, it shows up, and and so. We got out worked in certain areas, but some of it was our own fault. Some of it was our own our own mistakes and miscommunications. Is it hard to explain why players have a lack of energy at this time of year? Or? No, no, and I don't think it's I don't think it's. Uh, have you seen his practice yesterday? You know, it's not. Uh, and today, it's it's not like anybody's tired. I think it. I think, and, and we were very cognizant of this, as I think most people are. You're trying to keep them mentally fresh, and and and. Uh, but there's a lot of games. I mean, it's just, it's the way that it is. And, and players are responsible uh, for their energy. They're responsible for their mindset. I mean, we try to help it, but at the end of the day, I mean, there's there's a competitiveness that you've got to have that should override anything. So uh, I don't think we're tired. I, I don't think that at all. I just don't think we uh, we didn't have enough guys that were locked into the fight the other day. And every one of these games, they're a fight. And, and uh, like I told them earlier today, if you don't want to be in the fight, you better marry well, or you better jump in and, and uh, while there's still some money around and and and, uh, and jump in a jump in an unemployment line or something because it's not it's not easy. I mean, you got to fight every day in this economy, in this world, but certainly in the world of sports. And 
that, that's the way that it is. And you're responsible for it. You're responsible for your own self-determination day in and day out. And we coach it. And we're the same way. I mean, if I were to come in energetic, I, or not, if I didn't have any energy, how could I expect anybody else to have it? But that's the way that it is. But I, I don't, I say all that, and I don't think we have that issue. I just think we didn't. Uh, we made some mistakes in that game at costly times. You mentioned this, the switchables and just like coming off the screens and stuff mm -hmm. like that. What's your just general assessment for how those guys have done with it this year? It seems like you've had some occasions where you've had guys go under and. Well, we're getting, well, but see, again, we're not a, we're not a big trail team. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's we're not one of those teams that okay we trail everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 look forward to seeing that. What we want to be is a team that reads the point of the screen well, and that is where we have really made improvement. And and. Because a team like Iowa, they're going to adjust the screen. They know we want to blast the gap, so they're going to adjust the screen. So you got to go to the point of the screen. And we spend that. That's one of our fundamental breakdowns. Not every day. Well, it is when we're defending, obviously. But even in, we break that down at probably two out of every three days in practice, where it's just that 10, 12, 14 minute segment of that. So uh, no, we're not we're not overdoing it with with trying to trail everything. And and. Uh, I think, uh, again, it's, it's when we get away from the point of the screen and we allow that screen to dictate how we're coming rather than us reading it and, and then not dropping that shoulder. That's when we've had some problems. We had one the other day. Victor didn't stay attached to Matt Gatons, okay, and then he ends up trying to chase it over the top. Well, they move the screen, and, and, and he's flying over the top, and Gatons hits a three because he's hot. And... Uh, and the one with Christian, the hands were down. The one with Will, Christian and Will didn't switch. I mean, it just it's, it sounds simple, but you get into the heat of battle game like that, those are the things that hurt you. I think for North Carolina Central, doesn't look like they have a lot of size, but how do they make up for that in, in the way they play? They've got, they've got one of the toughest competitors that I think will come through Assembly Hall in Dominique Sutton. I don't know him personally, but I watched him for a long time. He played at Kansas State, watched him in the summertime. Um, I don't think there's any question whatsoever why NBA people will be here watching him tonight or tomorrow night. Um, Ray Willis is a high-level scorer. Uh, Ingram can can shoot the ball. I think they're uh, Chaston is a is a strong physical guy that can shoot the ball from 15 feet to three-point range. So uh, maybe he doesn't have the size. They've got the width. So they've got the width and they've got the toughness. That's what we see on film, and, and they've been in. They've been in some battles watching the NC State game again today. They came down and cut that thing after a 15-point deficit to two. So, uh, you know, it, when, it, when the schedule all came down, you look at it and say, okay, this is not right. We're not, we're not going to have three games in three weeks. That just doesn't make any sense for a team. So they were the team that, was, that we were able to move. Now once they're here, you, you say, wow, man, I'm not looking forward to this. And, but, but I think he's a really good coach. I've thought that the last couple of years. So he's done a really good job building that team up, building this program. When is this game supposed to be? When you guys are sometime in December. We have to check with you know exactly. Yeah, it was, it was in between um, Kentucky and Notre Dame, I believe. Oh, wait, well, that, that was, was exam week. That was exam week. Then it was so supposed it was to be Kentucky. Kentucky. before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, we 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 talked to a lot of different people with those contracts about moving once the schedule came out. Mm -hmm. You guys get what I'm saying, right? I mean, three games mm -hmm. in three weeks because you don't know what's happening with those wild cards, and just the way that it is. Kind of along that line, I mean, how tough would it have been to have a game like you had Sunday and then not play into the following Sunday? Would have been tougher on the players, <laughs> I'll tell you that. But, but no, I, I, think, I think rhythm this time of year, getting in a flow, like when we had all those games in a row, we were really in a good rhythm. And, you, and you're always worried every day, are we practicing too long, are we tired? No, we were just getting stronger. You know, and I think that's, that's why we're able to look at it and say we were really improving. And uh, you don't like anything to disrupt your flow. Like, like I'm not, that's okay, we've got to leave at a certain time every day. We're gonna, we obviously don't practice at the same time every day with the academics. But, but there's a certain flow you want to the season. And, and uh, two games in a week is a flow that everybody pretty much gets under. And uh, you don't want to lose that very much. And, and to lose it once, that's fine. To lose it once a month, that's fine. But to lose, to have three games in three weeks, that's not fine. At this point in the season, what do you do to get consistency from your team when it comes to just valuing possessions? Don't do anything different than what we've been doing. I mean, we just keep practicing at a high rate, which we are. And uh, uh, people see us practice. You know, there's an NBA man from out of town in today, and he said, I can't believe how hard you went the day before, and it was only like an hour and 15 minutes. You know, that's, 
that's the kind of um, method you want. I mean, it's short, it's crisp, it's sharp, and, and we're getting that. You know, I've, I've cut practices way back from even the times in Indiana, but certainly from the times of Marquette. Those guys, I mean, when they hear the practice times, I mean, they just think it's like ultimate, like Mr. Softies <laughs> moved in. You know what I just think? You're trying to pace your team, and, and uh, uh, so there's no doubt we try to treat February as a month that we're trying to cut it back some. But uh, we've stayed, I think we've stayed really consistent with the preparation, with the fundamental breakdown, with the shooting, with the film. And, and some people do it differently, but I, I don't see any system issues with that. So as long as we're staying consistent there, that gives us the best chance of the game. Now, if we're having up and down practices, I'd really be concerned. So d during the games, then, what, what has been, do you think, has been some of the problems? Guys just playing too fast or...? I think uh, I think it's some of that. I, I think it's we do some. I mean, we, we do some amazingly difficult things. Like again, the other day, we weren't trying to attack the middle of the press with Iowa. That, that's that's the spot they're taking away. We're trying to make sure that that is covered so we can get the ball reversed and up the court. And uh, I think I think uh, being strong with the ball, uh, pass fake, a couple of those things. I think it's just the reminders of the game and. and now, if you'd have watched this practice for a couple of days, you saw us attack Northwestern's press. You saw us play against other presses. We, we didn't have those issues. I just think, I wish I had an answer for it. But I think as you long as you stay consistent uh, with how you continue to prepare, well, then you try to adjust or you have to substitute. Will's point production has kind of tailed off since his injury. I know you said he had a, he had a groin injury kind of in there. Has, has he been bothered at all by, by oh, that I think injury before. that? But I'll say this, we're, we're not in the second half without Will's defense yet. So I think the groin injury, uh, I think Will's got to continue be, to be really good with decision making. Will needs to, one of Will's excellent strengths, there, there's three strengths that Will has that on the offensive end that are really, really good. Okay, he's a very good mid-range shooter, moves extremely well without the basketball, and he can offensive rebound. Now, two of those three things he's not doing at a high level right now. He's not moving without the ball, and he's not offensive rebounding at a high level. Those things have to come. And at the same time, he's, he, he's, we're very comfortable with him shooting threes. He made a couple right away against Iowa. Uh, and defensively, he's one of our best defensive players, bar none. So I don't think he's playing poorly at all. Do I think his injury came at a bad time? Yeah, Will's a rhythm player. But uh, yeah, it, it, there's, there's other places where Will can create some offense. And it's, it's, uh, it's certainly on the offensive glass, and it's on playing without the basketball, back-cutting, uh, reading situations, because those are some gifts that he has. So I think Will can participate a little bit more in that. At the same time, we want him to have a comfort level with the way that he attacks. But at the same time, I, on top of that, he's got to read the decisions. You know, we don't I say this all the time. You want to draw a crowd and kick it or draw a crowd and, and make the play. You don't want to drive into a crowd and try to force the action. And sometimes we've got a couple of young guys, they drive into that crowd, and they drive into the traffic, and they're trying to make something happen that's not there. And they've got to continue to understand. I say, we're doing our team a great injustice. When we, I said this today in practice. When we don't move the ball at a high rate with the way we can shoot the ball, and with Cody, we are doing ourselves a serious injustice when that ball doesn't move. And, and that's what we want to continue to work on. You, know, you, you want to be, you're a really, really good player when you are as good with the ball as you are without it. And, 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 and it also at the same time where you can affect the game with your scoring and you can affect the game with your passing. And playing without the ball is something that, that, that whether you're screening, whether you're cutting, whether you're reading where the opening is, whether you're uh, reading how you're being played, you get into that backup, that stuff's just incredibly valuable. And I think we've got to get better at that. That's been a big, big point of emphasis for about a week now. And, and again, because I think we've had some slippage there. And, uh, and a lot of times that's what practice is about too, correcting the slippage. Trying to stay as good as you can with the fundamentals, but correcting the slippage. And, and uh, that's something that we've tried to work hard on. And Will's a big part of that. To take it back, to, is, is the groin or even still the ankle costing him some bounce explosion in both of those areas, mm -hmm. especially rebounding, I'm sure, and even moving out the ball? You'd have to ask him moving. that. Uh, I don't see that in practice when he gets a clear path to the basket. He gets it. He's got tremendous quick twitch, so th 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 that's so maybe it is a little bit. You know, his, I think his groin bothered him a little longer than he than he let on. Uh, and, and again, there's there's no team right now. And there's no player. They all think they're the only ones, but there's no team that's that's not banged up, and there's no team that's not tired. And and 
a lot of times, you know, you're, you, you've got to be, over, be able to overcome your own reality of your perception. You know, no, everybody's tired. I've got to, you've got to be strong enough to play through it. And I think he's done a good job of that. We've got some other guys that are dealing with nagging things. And they get treatment and they get rehabbed and, and they just come out and battle. But, I mean, you'd have to ask him that, right. how much it really affects him. Christian's had some inconsistency in, in shooting at, at times this year. Is it anything that he's doing in the flow of the game? or He's not know, what enough is, without the ball. He's got to rebound it at a higher level. Not saying anything we haven't said to him. He is, a, he is an outstanding shooter. He has made himself that. He has worked hard to become that. But you can't govern how you play by if the shot's going in or not. And, and, and he's got to rebound the ball better. There's no question he's emerged as one of our best defenders. And he's played extremely hard all year long. And, and uh, watching him the last couple days, he's not tired. Okay? It's, it, it's just a matter, uh, or not any more tired than anybody else is. It's, it's just a matter of really being committed, and, and, he, and he, he's got to get fouled, so he's got to get some post-ups, and, and, he's, got, and he's got to go in and create contact more. But, but the offensive boards, it, we're a much better team when Christian's getting to the foul line, much better team. In the last five games, he hasn't been there enough. I think he's 15 to 17 in the last five games. I mean, that's, a, that's a heck of a percentage, but we need to get him there more. And so you can always affect the game in some way on, on both ends. When, when the shot's not going in. And, and it's the same answer for Will as it is for, for, for Christian. Go rebound it, post up, back cut, you know, get somebody open and then pop it out. But, but Christian will break out and be shooting the ball fine in practice. But, but those are things that have to happen in the game. Do you think Verdell gets to the point where he loses his, loses that brace or will he wear that all year? No, I don't know. I, I haven't even thought about that. He's been practicing it and he battled today. And I overruled the, uh, the referee. They said he took the charge in the cylinder. It was the second charge of the day. I overruled it. I mean, we're giving him credit for it. You know, I mean, we're not, we're not, uh, we don't have, we don't have to qualify to be an official in the NCAA tournament in practice. We want to get Verdell Jones taking charges. So, uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a question for Tim. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really know. And it doesn't make any difference to me. But whatever he's comfortable in, it's fine.